This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Hello, couch football fans, and welcome to the Primetime Podcast. My name is Ricky Widmer, and as always, I'm joined by the charming Brandon Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. And Brandon, we're fi- we finally got to it. I don't After even believe it. weeks and weeks of talk, we're finally going to preview the MAC conference. We're here with the MAC. And Brandon laughs because, obvious guys, we are joking. You can see by the title. We're going to talk about the Big 12. It's all going to be Big 12 football. Brandon, we saved the best for last. That's truly what we did, right? And we see, saved I, the best for last. And I was just going to make a joke. It was going to be all Big 12 football. That means we'll be done in about 10 minutes. That'll leave us enough time for the CUSA, the MAC, maybe get some D2 schools in there, but... The two big things with the Big 12 right now. Number one, are we going to add any teams? Right now, the Big 12 sits at 10 teams. And because of that, they don't have a conference title game. So everything right now, preseason, is are we going to see expansion in the conference? And is that going to lead to a conference title game? Big 12 commission said it simply, on, I believe, Monday, he said, I don't know about the future, but I can tell you damn well sure for this year, we're not going to have a uh, conference title game. We're just not going to have one this year. That's all I know. You see, Ricky, I, I think the biggest thing we need to talk about today in the Big 12 is is the big lie that they're trying to feed everybody. The big lie? The big lie. They call themselves the Big 12. They used when, to have 12 teams, When, though. in fact, they have just... 10 teams. They used to have 12, though. This propaganda. I think they used to have more than 12. This propaganda that they're trying to sell to everybody is just a heinous crime. Well, you got to think. Originally, they had Missouri. They had Nebraska. They had Texas A&M. They had Colorado. They had 14 teams at one point, Brandon. Well, if they if, if Missouri went away, what in the hell is K-State still doing there? K-State's kind of, we're going to get, they kind of fell off the, uh, Wagon since the uh, the the Klein as their quarterback. Well, Missouri's in the SEC. Might as pull. Might as well put K State <laughs> in the Big Ten. But the big thing, and you even said it, they have ten teams. And I guess we'll talk about that first. I'll ask it plain and simple. Do you see the Big Twelve expanding in the near future? No. No, I mean, why would they? Who are they going to get? Who? What team's really going to want to go to the Big Twelve? Well. One team I could throw out there because, and this kind of goes off of what I talked about in a video on our YouTube channel, can check the link down below in the description, is Missouri's Gary Pinkle said, well, we got to force independents to join conferences. Well, if BYU, not saying they are, but if they are looking to join a conference, being in Utah, it kind of, I mean, Colorado used to be in the Big 12. They were in Colorado. I mean, geographically, it's good. BYU's trying to get up into the kind of college football playoff ranks. Being in a conference would help. I guess my thinking is you already had teams that have left you. I don't know. Because the competition hasn't been good. I I don't know. I I don't see why teams would want to add on. Uh, You know, that's that's my only thing. You're talking about why teams would want to join The Big 12, not the Big 12 adding teams. Why would, you're asking me for my sales pitch. Your BYU, what me, the Big 12, what am I bringing to the table? Is that what you're asking? Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of, that's kind of what I guess I'm out loud questioning. Like what's, what's the draw? Why would I come? What, you know, as a team, you see these teams leave. Mm -hmm. Why would you then want to come into the conference? And I'm looking here. Since 19, we're going to use 1996 as a kind of reference point. That was when they had, they started the title game for the conference. Here were our conference winners from those games. Texas, Nebraska, Texas A&M, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Colorado, Oklahoma, K-State, Oklahoma, Texas, Oklahoma, 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 Texas, Oklahoma. Since they ditched that in the 2011 season, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, Oklahoma, Baylor, Baylor, TCU. So, I mean, 
you can kind of see a shift in just the power of what teams are the most strong in the conference. But if you look at the track record, for a while there, it was either Texas or Oklahoma is going to be winning the conference. And if you look at most of the teams in the title games, Nebraska was there a lot, even if they won or lost. Colorado was there for a few times. Missouri was there for a couple times before the 2011 season when they ditched the conference game. Texas A&M. These are all teams that left your conference. So good teams left your conference. If I'm BYU, are you telling me, well, we just need we just need someone, so come on over. Is that what you think they're saying? Like, is that how BYU's feeling if the Big 12 said, hey, come to our conference? Because really, I don't know what the B- Big 12 would pitch. They got spurred from the college football playoff, and they're not the SEC. They're not the Big Ten. They're not the Pac-12. Well, you know me, Ricky. If I were BYU, I'd be going to the SEC, knocking on their door, going, mm-hmm. "Hey, hey, how do we get in here? What do we got to do?" But since what, we're talking, combining big, the conference. But since we're talking Big Twelve today, um, I I think that uh, I I I don't really know. I I think that with a lot of these conferences, it's going to be the same power teams, no matter what. Mm-hmm. The teams that you mentioned, the BYU. TC, I mean, they're, well, they're BYU, pardon me, Baylor, uh, you know, they're, they're right there. Just to use this as a kind of base point, on ESPN, link you can see down below, they pulled the Big 12 players on expansion. And the first question, should they expand? 88% of Big 12 players said yes. Then when they asked, list at least one school, that you would want to add to the conference, here were the schools that were brought up. I'm not going to say percentages, just here's the schools that people answered with. Texas A&M, BYU, Houston, Nebraska, those were the big four, then Arkansas, Boise State, Missouri, Oregon, Texas State, Southern Florida, Southern Cal. I have some problems with that because... The first thing I'm thinking off is you can take Texas A&M, Nebraska, Missouri, throw them away. They left. Why would they come back? It's kind of like when you break up with a girlfriend. Why would you? The people do it, but maybe it's just me. Why would you go back? Or you, Ricky. Le- you left for something. And it's not like a I left and I'm still single. You left for another person and you are still. You're happy with that person. Why would you come back? Or, Ricky, back? how about this? Maybe it's just the modern-day break. We just need a break for a couple I see. months. We just you, need a break for a couple of years. Maybe, I know you're going to be there when I come back, babe. So then why don't we just, you know, we'll break for a little bit and we'll come back. See, I don't know. Maybe Nebraska, but Missouri and Texas A&M, you do not leave. The Big 12 is like leaving a 5 for the SEC, who's a perfect 10. You're leaving a 5 for a 10, if I'm equating it to guy code. You, you've you left a 5 for a 10. Why would you leave the 10 for a 5? That's a great question. The big but 10 right now is like a 7 that may be moving up to an 8. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If there's a multiplier, they're probably at about an 8.4. Talking about the big 10? No, they're moving up to that, but right now they're a 7. But here's, here's, They're in transition, Brandon. Here's my thinking. How big do you want conferences to be? 12. Because you have to have... The reason I would say for the Power Fives, at least 12. Because then you have 6-6 six and six in each division conference title game. But, and, but there's my... Right there is my question, my concern. More of my concern because if you get a couple more teams to come in... Mm-hmm. Get a couple more teams that want to come in. All they need how, is two. I know, but I'm saying how big could you make it? How, See, big, do you, here's how the thing. big would you allow yourself to go? This is my general like thought with expansion and just conference size is I like the number 12. The reason being, like I said, you have two divisions, six teams each. So I'm going to take, for example, Baylor. They're inside A of the Big 12, this 12-team conference. They're in a six-team division. That means they have five other opponents in their division. There's five games right there. 
Then you add three random games from the other conference. So you're playing your division and half of the other division each year. And those other three rotate. So you're not playing the same three every year. Then you get a conference title game and you get an outright champion. You still keep your eight conference games, four non-conference games. You don't have to go to what the Big 12 is doing now because they don't have a title game. Okay, we have 10 teams. You just get nine conference games and you only get three non-conference games now just because everyone has to play everybody. You don't get that. Everyone can play their division without adding an extra conference game. Why don't they just split up right now into five and five? It's kind of like fantasy football. A 10-man a ten man league is respectable, but you really want that 12-man league. But why don't they at least work with it now? See how it is? Because I, I really don't think they... I, I don't know, but the one th- instant thing I would have to look at immediately is the geography of the conference. And I feel like having Missouri and Texas A&M, I believe they were on the same side of the conference divisionally. They would have to reorganize things. It'd be a nice thought. They could do it easily. You could have five and five, but then you're playing over. Cause if you have five in each, you're playing four and four. Then you're, you're only leaving out two teams. They were kind of doing that anyways. And then you've got, especially with, I feel like teams, I mean, we saw it with Art Bryles already complaining about why Baylor and TCU weren't in the college football playoff. People are just going to complain about, well, the, this, and people do it. This conference is stronger than this one. 12 is that perfect number to me. 12 overall. And I feel like you can add teams out of the ones listed. Why not go for a Boise State? Why not go for a Boise State, a team that's been, I thought Coach Peterson was going to leave, go to Washington, and Boise State was going to fall off the map. They had not. They have not. You could also attack a team like Central Florida. Central Florida, geography-wise, doesn't make sense because they're all the way in Florida, and the Big 12 is mostly that southwestern Texas, Oklahoma, kind of south Midwest kind of area of the U.S., but I would go after BYU, Houston. Houston makes a ton of sense. If you feel like they can compete in your conference, you already have, originally you had Texas, Texas Tech, Texas A&M, Texas, Texas, Texas. Why not add the Houston Cougars if they can compete? Then you have BYU. That's not that far. Utah. There are teams that you can take. It's just finding the right ones that are not going to just come into the conference and boom, instant bottom feeder. Well, Ricky, how about this? How about we dive right into the teams that are in the conference and uh, talk about them? Let's talk about Baylor first. More importantly, the before we get into the team, the comments by their head coach, Art Bryles. And this is what he said. This is from a tweet from Brett McMurphy of ESPN, Art Bryles said, and I quote, if Baylor or TCU had an older brand name, one of us would have gotten in the college football playoff, end quote. He didn't stop there as he said, a lot of 60-year-olds on selection committee, and this is my favorite quote of the whole thing, old dogs don't wander far from home, end quote. What do you think about that? Uh, I don't know. I I, I think that... uh... I don't know. I think that the teams that got in were were good teams. Uh, you know, it takes some time, honestly, uh, to to really make a name for yourself as being a good team. Well, it's it's easy. How about this? It's easy to be able to make a name for yourself as being a bottom bottom feeding team, but it's tough to be able to make because you don't want it to be a fluke. How many teams have mm-hmm. been a fluke? And then all of a sudden in one year, because people want to stay away from yeah. them because they're like, oh, we don't want to make a bad decision and then not get good ratings. Um, so they kind of go in a different direction. But, you know, a couple more years or a year or two, well, we might see something happen then. But you have to make a name for yourself. It takes a little bit of time. 
Well, and I mean, I'm not looking at it more from you were saying like Baylor and TCU, you got to sit there and okay, just continue to do well, make yourself that big brand. And where kind of our Bryles argued that point with you was old dogs don't wander far from home. No matter what they do, these 60 year olds are going to say Alabama, Ohio State, this, that, the teams that have been good throughout their entire life. And I'm looking, let's just look at the season before last. So this is 2013. Baylor was an 11 and 2 team that year. Their only losses came at Oklahoma State and then in the Fiesta Bowl to Blake Bortles and the 10th ranked um, Knights of Central Florida. TCU in 2013, they were a 4 and 8 team. They lost a bunch. Their four wins came against Southeastern Louisiana, SMU, Kansas, and Iowa State. So they went from four and eight, two and seven in the conference, to last year being a twelve and one team, beaten old miss, an SEC team in the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl, only losing to Baylor. It's the only team they lost to. I don't think there was the fluke situation of last year. However, I do feel like the big thing for the college football selection committee was Oregon, Ohio State, Alabama, Florida State. Main thing those four teams had in co- like common with each other, they were outright conference champions. Outright. You could not contest that Alabama, Ohio State, Oregon, or Jameis Winston, the Florida, the Florida State Jameis Winstons, won their conference title game. The Big 12, you had, well, Baylor and, Tex- Baylor and TCU finished around the same record. However, Baylor beat TCU, and there was that whole argument. They just stayed away from it, went with the for sure. All more of, an, of a reason. To why have the that Big title 12 game. should be pushing you need that title hard game. for a title game. However, you need, to me, I feel like you need two teams to have that title game. You don't need two teams. You would like two teams. You could do it five and five. You could do it. So I'd get on that quickly. Let's put it this way. Here are other conferences that have title games and they don't. The AAC, which formerly the Big East, they have a title game. They have two divisions. You have the CUSA has a title game. You have the MAC Conference has a title game. The Mountain West has a conference title game. Those are all the other non-Power 5 conferences that have a title game over you. I feel like that's just like, baby brother that's like hey look we're better than you look what we have and look what you have kind of a thing yeah i think you're right Uh, the big 12 though you know they 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 can't sit back and Mm -hmm. hope that it happens and then complain when they don't get a team in yeah i feel bad for the teams that that don't get the looks and they are good but at the same time are you are you complaining and not doing anything or are you at least trying to do something and then saying, you know what, we're working over here. Nothing's happening. Our teams need recognition or deserve recognition. I'm going to say this. I would not be surprised in a couple of years if Baylor or TCU continue to do good things in the Big 12. And if the Big 12 says, nope, we're not going to add any teams, we're not going to have a conference game. I wouldn't be surprised if Baylor said, Okay, fine, we're going to join the Big Ten. Or TCU said, fine, you know, we beat Old Miss a couple times. We're going to join the SEC. We're going to join Texas A&M and Missouri. Or even go the other side, say, you know what, we'll join the Pac-12. We'll go play with big boys like Oregon, Southern Cal, UCLA, Stanford, and screw you guys because you guys aren't doing anything to help us because – The one thing I think of with this TCU team, before last year, the last time they were relevant is when they had Andy Dalton, the Red Rocket, as their quarterback. That was the last time they were relevant. 
and now they're relevant again, and you have some steam in the conference, and TCU has the best, arguably the best player in the conference at Trevon Boykin. Best player in the Big 12 by far. Yeah, but like like I was saying, Ricky, they got to be able to do something with it. They they've they've got to go out and they've got to make some 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 moves or or go to the commission and say, hey, we've got to make this happen. You know, when you look at the who gives a crap league, you know, of anybody outside of the power conferences, then you've got to be able to go to them and say, hey, let's go. You know, we've got to make something happen. And why aren't you? That's I got two gotta questions do. for you. One, this is the last. This first question is the last we're going to talk about the hypotheticals, officially get into talking about the teams that actually matter coming into 2015. Here's number one. Do you think the Big 12 made the right step in this direction by saying, you know what, fine, we have 10 teams. How we're going to do it is everyone's going to play one another. You're going to have nine non or nine conference games, and you'll just have three non-conference instead of four. Is that a step in the right direction and will at least have an outright Big 12 champ? It's a step in the right direction. Definitely is. You got you to gotta make some more steps, though. You can't just make one step with the right foot and not bring the left foot along with. The other thing I'm interested to see with this is I swear, and I bet you, that we're going to get a situation where even though everyone played each other, we're going to get a situation where, like, for example, TCU, Baylor, and Oklahoma. All finish with one loss, but Baylor beat TCU, TCU beat Oklahoma, Oklahoma beat Baylor. So who's your outright champion? Because really, you don't know because it's a little triangle of three teams. Three points make a triangle. But let's get into the real question. Who's your front runner to win this conference coming in? Who's your front? Your favorite at the beginning of the season? Not who's going to win it. Who's your favorite now? Can the favorite be the one that might win it? It could. I didn't know if your favorite was going to be the one that you think is going to win it. Well, my favorite right now are the Horned Frogs. They're your favorite? They're my favorite. They're my favorite. I, I, I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know, go with everyone else. I ah, mm-hmm. know, TCU. They're, but no, but they, they're, they're a good squad. They are a good squad. They were good last year. They were solid last year. I, I'm just looking for more good things from them. I think that, you know, they could overtake Baylor. It, it will take a good season. It will take, no uh, you know, little to no bumps in the road. But I think they can definitely do it. They're my favorite right now. <sighs> I kind of... I don't know what to say with this because (sighs) I'm going to make a bold, I'm going to make a bold prediction. It's kind of a big, bold prediction. It's one that's kind of has two combined into it. You ready for it? Here we go. Number small, bold prediction. Number one, Baylor nor Baylor or TCU are going to win the big 12. The team that wins the big 12 the Oklahoma Sooners. The Sooners are going to be led by their offense and win and just lead the Big 12. Bob Stoops is going to bring his boys back from the depths of last year's 8-5 and five season and just like TCU a year ago is going to. Here's how it's going to lay out. Oklahoma is going to be first, TCU second, Baylor third. Because the one thing, the biggest question mark with Baylor I have Life without life without Petty. Life without Petty. How is that going to work? I know that you can talk to me until you're blue in the face. Like, Ricky, they have Seth Russell. But I still have that question mark of life without Bryce Petty. Well, it's the biggest question mark, I think, within this conference. What do you think? Do you think they'll be fine, or are they going to have some struggles with Seth At their quarterback. Do I think they'll be fine? Yeah, I think they'll be fine. Do I think that they're going to be like they were with Bryce Petty? No. No, I don't think so. I think they will be fine. And right now you just wait and see what happens. But I think Baylor will be fine. They're still going to be up at the top. I agree that they'll still be in the top three. Uh, But uh, they may not be top of the chart worthy. And right now, if you are a Baylor Bear supporter... If you haven't shut the podcast off with what I said about 
Seth Russell struggling, you're probably shouting at your computer, phone, iPad, iPod, whatever you're listening to the podcast on, saying, well, Ricky, what about his 804 yards, eight touchdowns, one interception, and adjusted QBR of 81.3 in 2014, where he played, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games. However, it was really only three. The first two, and then against Texas Tech, were the ones where he had the most. And I mean, it's such a small sample size. And the two opponents he played, where they won 45 to nothing and 70 to six, were SMU and Northwestern State, respectively. So, I mean, you can say the numbers speak for itself, but he didn't play against Texas. He didn't play against the in the 61 to 58 win against TCU. He didn't play because Bryce Petty was there. Yes, he it looks like there may be some bright spots. But he didn't play most of the time because duh, Bryce Petty was there. You might be onto something in your analysis and your bold per- prediction. What, of Oklahoma? Of Oklahoma. Trevor Knight. Uh, Samaje Perrine. I was going to say Trevor Knight, the quarterback. I mean, Perrine, 240 carries last year, over 1,500 yards, 21 touchdowns on the ground. Uh, they were 11th in rushing yards, 21st in points for, 85th in passing yards. That could go up. But uh, Oklahoma, a team that I think people won't necessarily be looking at because of where they finished last year, mm-hmm. I I don't know. I think that your bold prediction isn't as stupid as your the ones you usually make. <laughs> but I didn't say still. Hey, still, at least I haven't a bit said, of a stretch. At least I didn't come out and say something stupid like, "Well, you know what." Kansas is going to win the Big 12 in first-year head coach is David Beatty. It's going to come out and win the Big At least I didn't go that far, bold prediction. And we thank God for that. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, I mean, Oklahoma to me has all the tools to be successful. They have the running back, the quarterback, the coach. They have a great coach in Bob Stoops. And to me, I just think of... This team, I know they went to the Sugar Bowl in 2012, but I think that Perrine could be the next best Oklahoma Sooner running back all time, right behind AP. He has that kind of potential to be that good. Like We're we're looking at this season saying, and I'm not saying he's going to be the AP in the NFL, but I feel like he can be a guy that, Has a good season here. When he does go to the NFL, teams sleep on him. And he ends up being a solid running back for whatever NFL team decides to take him. Another interesting bold prediction. Adrian Peterson wasn't a first-round pick. Many people were overlooking him. I remember, and this is going to be a little Ricky Widmer back-in-the-day story. Coming into his rookie season, we did our fantasy football league. And when I said to my league, okay, with this selection, I'm going to take Adrian Peterson. Maybe it was because we were in Chicago. Maybe it's because everyone was overlooking him. My entire league went from the Bears. Adrian Peterson from the Bears. I'm like, no, from the Vikings. And then he comes out and has a great rookie season. Perrine's going to be good. Like I said, Trevor Knight is going to be good. And really, in this conference, the three names to look for. Trevon Boykin is going to be the best quarterback but won't have the best team, Trevor Knight and Seth Russell. Whichever one can do better will be more successful. Well, I should say whichever team can be, whichever one could be smarter because really they could, you could have the best stats in the conference, but still be the second place team one game behind who's in front of you. I don't know. I'm 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 interested. I just I think that you've got some interesting predictions here. Give me a dark horse. Who's your dark horse in the Big Twelve? Because really, we, we're not gonna. 
let me put it this way. We're not arguing that Baylor, Oklahoma, well, different order. Baylor, TCU, and Oklahoma are the favorites, right? We're not arguing that. No. Who is your dark horse then? Is it a team like Oklahoma State that's on the rise? Iowa State that's kind dark, of been trying When you say to, dark horse, do you mean dark horse just the, to do well or to win the conference? Let's say do well. Do significantly well. Maybe not win the conference well, but... How about this? They're a staple, and they're going to be in a good bowl game. You know, might be reaching here, but let me say this, and, and it's not just because I'll have more mm-hmm. to say on it later. How about K-State? I knew you were going to say how that. About, how, about, I knew it. how about them? With the question marks that they have surrounding the team, if, if they do anywhere near as well as they did last year... I think that's kind of a dark horse. And don't give too much away. You guys can wait and see later this week. I want to say it's Friday is going to be the day where Brandon comes out with his K-State preview. But yeah, K-State, they're they're an interesting one because when they had his first name is blanking me right now, but the last name, Klein, the quarterback. I think it was Colin Klein or Kevin Klein. I think it was Colin Klein. When he was their quarterback... When they played Oregon in the bowl game. Oh, you're not talking last year. No, this was okay, a yeah, few yeah, years ago. Yeah. They were a really good team. Then he left. They fell off a little bit. They didn't do great last season. But mine aren't really dark horses. I'm going to give you two teams to watch. You ready? Number one, Texas. Can Charlie Strong in year two with the Longhorns bring the Hook'em Horns Back to national prominence. Can he do it? That was another one that I had in mind. Do you think he can do it in year two? I, I don't know. You know, Texas football is... He had a year one that went six and seven, five and four in the conference. Just wanted to throw that out there. Texas football, in the times of, let me throw it back, mm-hmm. Vince Young. My gosh. To get back to those days, Ricky... That would be something incredible. I don't know if we will. I mean, ever since Vince Young has been gone at Texas, and it was Reggie Bush's USC, Vince Young's Texas Longhorns. You had Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy. Even though he lost in the national title game, you had Colt McCoy. But I'm still saying, like, that era right there, that was it. Mm -hmm. Texas hasn't been anything near that in the last couple of years. Not anywhere near it. Yeah, and I mean, the big thing about Texas is, if I look at their quarterbacks, I mean, really it was a weird year quarterback-wise for Charlie Strong. Had the senior in David Ash, who it's kind of like, do I give it to, do I give him the job just because he's been here the longest? You had junior Tyron Swoops, who ended up playing most of the games, had... Oh, just shy of 2,500 passing yards, completed an average of 6.27 yards per attempt, 13 touchdowns to 11 interceptions. That type of quarterback is not going to win you games. Just plain and simple. And I think that's the big thing for Texas is what can they do at the quarterback position? Do you think Swoops is the guy this season for them? Is he going to have a more improved season, or do they find someone else on the roster? We'll see with Swoops. I think you got to give him, you got to give him some time again this year. You got to give him another chance. He deserves at least another chance. But I think that the leash will be short. I'm thinking first couple of weeks, three. Maybe four, uh, but uh, you don't you don't want your season to get lost. You don't want to get too far ahead, you know get get too far back in just your first couple of games. I'm gonna agree. If I have to pick, you're either three or four. I'm picking three only because conference schedule's different this year. There are three non-conference games in this order from one to three: at Notre Dame, home against Rice, home against Cal. Cal and Rice don't scare me. Notre Dame a little bit because I'm just not as confident in the quarterback. But if you say four, 
and fours your number and you lose to Oklahoma State in that fourth game, boom, pull them. Because after Oklahoma State, you got at TCU home against Oklahoma in the Red River rivalry. Then you got some games, K-State, Iowa State, Kansas, eh, West Virginia, that's a tough one. Texas A&M, eh, and at the end of the season at Baylor. But it's really that T- it's really that OK State, TCU, Oklahoma to start your Big 12 conference. That is what's going to be most important. You can take one of those games, might lose them. You can't lose all three of them. You can't lose two of them. You got to win two of them. Yeah, so that's important. I mean, it's important to get good play from the quarterback early on in the season. And if they don't get that, he's not going to last. And I'm looking at right now, I mean, it doesn't help them this season, but right now they have a commit for the 2016 season at the quarterback position, a dual threat guy. But looking at last year's recruits that are coming in, their top guy, Malik Jefferson, outside linebacker. Then you got Anthony Wheeler, another linebacker, Chris Warrant, who's a running back. They added cornerbacks, wide receivers. I'm looking here and I am not seeing. Yeah, they did. They added one quarterback, pro style quarterback, Matthew Merrick, out of Irving, Texas. So, really, to me, I feel like looking at that, why wouldn't Charlie Strong say, okay, swoops, it's yours. Go ahead and take it. Take it for the take it for the long run. Do I think Swoops is the guy? No, but it doesn't matter. It's his senior year. You can go I hate to say this, you can go one bad like not bad, but one mediocre season to find your and I'm gonna use this reference, your Teddy Bridgewater for Charlie Strong. He's got to find his Teddy Bridgewater because the whole reason he got this Oklahoma, or not Oklahoma, wow, Texas fans are going to shoot me. Texas job was because of what he did with the Louisville Cardinals. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. I think you're talking up a, a situation uh, too much of, I mean, it is, it is what it is. It's not that complicated. The guy's good or he's not. How about this? My second team to watch because I said I had two of them. Kansas. Moving on from the Charlie Weiss era, they now get new coach David Beatty. And, of course, at the Big 12 media days, Beatty is going to be a optimistic guy because he's we're going to win this season. But is Kansas really going to do well? That's the thing. They're a team to watch. Kansas? Kansas. No, yes. they're not. They're a team. To me, I'm saying they're a team to watch. Do poorly. Might not do well. A team to watch. I mean, do he, poorly. Here's their non conference slate South Dakota State, Memphis, at Rutgers. Okay. Rutgers is your toughest one. Then, I mean, of course, you got to play the entire Big 12 conference, but here's them in order Iowa State, Baylor, Texas Tech. OK State, OK, um, Texas, TCU, West Virginia, Kansas. And I'm telling you right now, OK State, Texas, and TCU, all on the road. Well, let me give you a stat from last year that'll make you laugh. Go ahead. I love to laugh. Kansas. That's it? Conference. Is that OK? I was like, is that the joke, Kansas? <laughs> Conference record, one and eight. Overall record, three and nine. Let's be honest, though. Charlie three and Weiss. Th- three and three at home. O oh and six on the road. 0-3 oh, against AP teams. How about that? Nah. They're not going to be good, but they're a team to watch only because only because I think they're going to do better than with Charlie Weiss. I just I feel like Charlie Weiss was the worst possible co I mean, he couldn't do anything with Notre Dame. Why do you think he was going to do anything with Kansas, are they going to finish last in the Big 12? Probably, but yeah, probably, but not really that much. I'm going to ask you two more questions, and then we'll get to our one that we've ended for for every conference preview. Number one. We're going to pick a title game winner? Well, the if college playoff and the conference title champion. Number one. 
MVP of the Big 12 at the end of the season? Is it Trevon Boykins to win? Uh, MVP of the Big Because I got another bold prediction for this 12. one. No, I, I think it's Samaji Perrine. Oh, you took my bold prediction, Brandon, right out from under me. It's going to be Perrine. Why do you think they're going to win the conference? Whoops, Ricky just spoiled himself again. <laughs> you love right that. Right there. So I'm, if giving, he comes anywhere- I'm giving you two. If, he, if he's the best player, even best offensive player, Oklahoma wins the conference. If he comes anywhere close to what he did last year, he carries the team. Coach of the year. Coach of the year. Oh. Do you want me to give you mine first? Yeah, go ahead. Gary Patterson. It's going to come in second in the conference, but win it. It's either going to be him or Stoops. I do not think, and I look at all these previews from across the interwebs, and they say, Art Bryles, Art Bryles, Art Bryles. It's not going to be Bryles. It's going to be Patterson or Bob Stoops, and I'm giving it to Gary. Gary's going to be the coach of the year in the Big 12. Well, let me spoil something like Ricky usually does. I'm going to say Gary Patterson because he leads TCU to a Big 12 finish. Right there. Number one finish. Let me put it this way then to go off of you said TCU, I said Oklahoma. My answer is no. TCU wins the Big 12 in your scenario. Do they make the playoff? Are we going to see a Big 12 team in the college football playoff this season? I say no. Well, how about this? TCU, a great finish last year. Great team. Baylor was pretty darn good. But TCU ends overall 12-1, and 5-1 and one versus top 25 teams. People thought they should have been in last year. They get in this year. So you think we're going to have a Big 12 team? I do. And it will be the winner of the Big 12. I'll put it this way. Since I said Oklahoma's going to win it, they're not going to get into the college football playoff. They're going to go back to a game that is familiar to them, mainly because of the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, that's how far this reference goes. They're going to go to the Fiesta Bowl. That's where they're going. Who they'll play, I don't know, probably another at-large team like they did Boise State in that upset. You know who was their running back that year? AP. AP was their running back when they lost to Boise in the uh, Fiesta Bowl. Is that is that game too old for you? Do you remember watching that game? With the Statue of Liberty play from uh, Boise State, you had their, I think it was their quarterback, proposed to his girlfriend who was the cheerleader after the game. Gosh, that's this going, had to be like oh seven oh. That's going yeah. way. That's going way back in time. This right had here. to be like oh six oh seven. It's going way back. So you were were you like in eighth grade around that time? Yeah. Wow. Oh, you were just a little young and back then. Yeah. A little young and but yeah, that is going to do it for the. We finally got to it, guys. The Big Twelve conference preview. Let us know in the comment section down below. What do you think of anything that we said today? Who do you have winning the Big 12? And will we see a playoff team from the Big 12 Conference this season? Also, tell us what we missed. What you would like us to talk about if if we touch the Big 12 again. We will. We will. Because there will be storylines all over this conference as we get through the 2015 season. I want to thank you guys for checking us out today. You can follow me on Twitter at Ricky Widmer. Brandon is at Young. Underscore Swan 19, most valuable podcast is at most valuable pod. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead, hit that like button. If you like the podcast, hit the sub button. If you loved it, if you're watching on SoundCloud, just go ahead and uh, follow our SoundCloud so you get all our podcasts up to date when we post them. I want to thank you guys for listening to this podcast. And as always, have a good day, everybody. Thank you for listening to this MVP podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod for more great podcasts.